blow jobs again, or why is everybody taking off their pants? <laughs> oh my god. You don't want a blow job from Shadow. Nobody wants a blow job from Shadow. He's one day gonna kill me for this shit. I think it's funnier that King Leak's only 50 and Shadow's 100. That should tell you how good each one is at blowjobs. Is that Scout from TF2 and Slenderman's job? You'd have to ask Mr. Medicker that one. Oh, God damn it, chat. Why are you always in the fucking way? There you go. Hold on. Now I, now I remember who I was sending a message to. I swear it's white on. He's not. Really, dude? You don't have the server up, do you? Don't forget, guys, to check out our Indiegogo really quick for the Forgotten Tune. Uh, time is almost up, and we haven't even hit $100. What the fuck is wrong with all of you? Throw some shekels! Come on, you gotta throw some shekels at the Indiegogo, which I need to update. Hold on, I'm updating the description with the Indiegogo. Okay, now he's good to go. Uh, let me call him. Damn it, Skype. No, freezing bad. Don't do that. <laughs> God, I... Uh, yo. Icon keeps throwing me off. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you just fine. Okay, I don't know if my audio is coming through alright or not. Yep, you sound crystal clear, and I believe the chat should be able to hear you, too. Okay. So I've got to ask right off the bat, what is with your Skype icon? Uh, you mean Linkara? <laughs> yes. Uh, wait, I just, I, he's such a handsome man, I had to use that as a, as an avatar. Why wouldn't you want to? I mean, that <laughs> face is just pure sexiness. Oh, so you are, aren't you doing a video on him and the from Channel Awesome? Oh, uh, yeah, that guy with the glasses. Uh, yeah, yeah, he'll be one of the videos. Him, Spoonie, uh, Nostalgia Critic, Nostalgia Chick, and uh, two others. So, uh, eventually, yeah, probably uh, not this month, but next month, we'll be Linkara. So, uh, it, it's coming down the pipeline. I know, you've been so busy with videos. It's it's weird seeing you doing so many videos. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, just, I guess, getting my Twitter shut down has given me uh, more free time than I realized. So, all right, I've got to ask. You opened up a Patreon, which I saw how much you're getting. Congratulations. What made you finally want to do a Patreon? Uh, I, personal reasons, I guess. N nothing I really want to go in depth about, but uh, I had a... Uh, I don't know how to put this. It just things change, I guess. Uh, life circumstances. So that that's why I did it. I tried to keep uh, as much <laughs> as many personal details out of it as I could. Because I just uh, I figured if I was going to ask people to donate to a Patreon, I wanted them to do it because they like the content, not because some kind of a, a sob story or something like that. Oh, so you're not just doing it to steal the shekels? No, I'm not doing it just to steal the shekels. Uh, no. <laughs> now, um, does that mean you're also monetizing your videos, or are you leaving them demonetized? No, I, I, I fucking hate ads on YouTube, personally. Um, I, use, I use Adblock when I watch videos, and... It would feel weird telling people watch my videos with ads on them when I never do that. So I just I have no interest in monetizing my videos. And besides, realistically, what what the hell uh, would YouTube monetize on my channel? I, I don't really see Disney wanting to promote their products next to furry shitting in diapers, <laughs> or you know Carfax wanting to get involved with um, you know <laughs> bike pumps up assholes. I don't really <laughs> think that's the kind of brand association they're looking for. Uh, so I don't, I don't well, think that's ever going to be a realistic possibility. You say that, but Disney seems to like to put ads on my video with uh, about a porn version of one of their princesses, so you never know. Yeah, well, that's that's true. You never know. But I, I do know Maker Studios dropped uh, PewDiePie, and I know Maker Studios will probably drop John Tron. And then with the boycott going on, I, I think advertisers have maybe tuned into the fact that there's some wild shit on YouTube that they're, they're not super fond of having their brands associated with. Yeah, I, I was in Maker at one point. They're kind of a horrible company. I could tell you stories. 
yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm aware. One of the bigger um, MCNs out there that uh, that <laughs> seems to be associated with every large channel. It's kind of bizarre, uh, but yeah, I, I, I guess I, I'm just yeah. I have no interest in monetizing videos and having ads on them. I, I think it's obnoxious, personally. I, I don't care if other people want to do it, but I just I use ad blocks, so I'm not going to tell people to watch fucking videos with ads on them. It just seems a little too much. Fair enough. So what do you think about the route YouTube's going right now? Do you think it's just going to be a temporary thing, or do you think they're really going to flush out a lot of us and throw us to the side? Well, I think people are having like two different discussions. I'm not really interested in the, the monetary discussion. I, I get that people are freaked out about it. I did a video talking about a bigots dollar where I was just kind of curious, I guess, where companies draw the line as to who they'll advertise to. I mean, if you have disposable income, wouldn't you want them to purchase your products? But um, there, there seems to be two debates going on uh, with two different camps, or at least their mindsets on it. You know, one group wants to talk about the money aspect of it, and I get that. Uh, but I'm more interested in uh, the policy aspect of it. Um, what are they going to allow as far as content goes? Because when they're, when they're talking about demonetizing and giving advertisers more power to kind of choose who they advertise with, you know, a part of that conversation, they were talking about, well, we're going to get rid of certain content. We're going to update our <clears throat> uh, terms of service. We're going to look at our communities. So it just it feels like the web's getting sanitized. The stuff that we saw happen on Twitter and Facebook, it feels like it's coming to YouTube. Uh, and it feels like Google is going to start cracking down on problematic content. Uh, and that's what kind of freaks me out because I, I've used the platform for, for fucking ever. I mean, it seems like since it started, so a decade. Um, and it's vastly different than it used to be as far as what's allowed to be uploaded and what you can say and what you can comment on. Um, and I just, I, I have a bad feeling about where it's going. I know all these companies are talking about incorporating uh, AI features to kind of weed through stuff. Um, you know, one of the things that kind of worries me the most is, uh, and I did a video too, was disappearing comments and metrics getting fucked with. Uh, you can actually see this for yourself. You don't even need to have a multiple account. You can go to your Social Blade account if you have a YouTube account, and look at user videos under Social Blade or under your profile on Social Blade, and it will show you how many ratings and how many comments you have. And if YouTube is tampering with something, those numbers will change. But Social Blade actually catalogs it as it's happening. Uh, so I've lost, I think, around 12,000 comments on my videos combined. And I don't know what's going on. Are those people getting blacklisted? Are they being shadow banned? Did they say something that YouTube didn't like? But, well, you know, what the fuck? What what could a commenter say? Like, how, how are we wiping out 12,000 comments? Seems a bit fucking extreme to me. Yeah, I, I, I've noticed the same thing. I actually contacted YouTube about it because I kept seeing comments, you know, appear in my in that little thing you check. And then when you, I went to the video, there was no comments. And, of course, YouTube's uh, response was, it's a glitch. See, I, I don't think it's a glitch. I, I The weird thing is I, I noticed this happening over the last two months. Um, and I think it's been going on a lot longer than that. I don't know exactly what's triggering it, but it goes back to kind of my concerns about the whole AI aspect. All these companies, like you look at Jack Dorsey and Zuckerberg when they're giving interviews and talking about what their platforms want to do moving forward. Uh, usually with YouTube or Google, you get some spokesman nobody's ever heard of before, but they're, they're all saying the same thing. We want to incorporate AI features to sort through this shit. And it feels to me like they've licensed an engine, uh, you know, kind of like in game development. Uh, why build your own when you can license one? So it feels like they're all shopping at the same fucking store and using the same system, and it's broken and fucked up. And it's pinging everything. Um, and even aside from comments, I know a lot of people have bitched about, it feels like my videos aren't getting a lot of views. It feels like my videos aren't spreading like they used to. Uh, people who subscribe to me aren't seeing it in their feed. So I, I don't know what's going on, but it feels like there's a shift right now kind of in policy. And I think maybe in a year or two, it's going to get a lot worse than it is right now, which is why I've been looking at different places. Like uh, I've used VidMe now for a couple of days. It seems... It seems okay. I haven't noticed anything that's making me worried. Uh, the only thing they do when you put up content that I've noticed so far when they don't agree with it or it's too risque is put a little not safe for work sticker over it. But you can still view it even if you're not logged in. So, I mean, that's already different than YouTube because I know that they prohibit you from watching certain content unless you confirm that your account is of a certain age. VidMe doesn't really give a shit, which I think is the appropriate response. Put a sticker up. Tell them, hey there might be shit that's going to upset you. So just a, a heads up. But um, yeah, man, it, it feels like dark days ahead. I'll be honest, as far as social media goes. 
Yeah, I've been using Vidme. Um, I, I actually really like them because the group, from what I understand, and I've actually talked to them, it's about like 10 people making it. And I'm wondering if it gets big enough because it seems like more and more bigger YouTubers are going to it. If YouTube may start to panic more if like the bigger ones start going over there. Yeah, you know, I've, the other thing I've noticed too is um, the other site that I, I kind of changed my position on was Mines. Um, I didn't like that it felt like it was pay to post because they have this whole boosting system, um, which is akin to what Facebook does, I guess. I, I you know, I don't know because I'm not huge into Facebook, but um, it's it actually is really functional. Uh, they put in new features and stuff. It it feels like a kind of a weird mishmash of YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook kind of crunched into one site. Um, so I think that'll do really well. I, I think Minds and VidMe will probably do really well as the older ones like Facebook and Twitter and YouTube become more draconian and Orwellian and how they treat their users. Um, it almost feels like where we are right now is where the internet or internet was maybe eight or nine years ago. You know, like when Reddit was replacing Dig and Facebook was replacing MySpace. You know, that's kind of like what it feels like is happening right now. You know, the big dogs that exist right now are getting a little too full of themselves and are doing that kind of desperate tailspin to manage their platforms and driving people away. And now we're going to start to see alternatives kind of rise up to take that place. But I, I don't know. It just feels like a shit show. The Internet feels like a shit show. Uh, and so what, what can you do, though? It, it, it is what it is. Well, that's why it used to be entertaining is because it was a shit show. Now it's not not so much a fun shit show for a lot of us. Well, yeah, just uh, look at YouTube and the different mentality. You know, back in the day when YouTube was new, um, even for the first couple of years, even maybe a year after Google had bought it, if somebody put up a video, you could tag a video response directly to it. They didn't really have any fucking control over it. So if you put up a video and I thought you were a retard, I could make a response video and then it would directly be displayed on your video itself. Like you could, they would never let that happen now. They'd be like, that's harassment. You know, you're you're targeting users. We can't let you do response videos like that anymore. So we're going to discontinue that feature. So I, I don't know. Everything is so fucking bubble wrapped for everybody's safety. And it feels like all these social media platforms think that they need to be the parents. You know, like we need to tell you what's good for you. So instead of giving you control from the user end, you know, giving you the options to, if you don't want this person to talk to you, block them. If you don't want these comments, filter them. Instead of letting you have the control, we're going to do it. We're going to tell you who the bad people are and what the bad comments are and what the bad content is. And we're going to wipe it out. So you never even have to look at it. And I, I think that's the, the wrong way of going about it. If you take the social aspect out of social media, what the fuck do you have left? It's, it's nothing. It's, it's counterintuitive. It, it, it doesn't, make sense when you think about it but that's that's what they're doing everything's gonna turn into tumblr where only a certain kind are gonna be allowed and if you're not that certain kind then get the fuck out well yeah i mean tumblr is a good example it is now very different from what it was when it was first envisioned i don't think the people that created it i can't remember the guy's name but i, I don't think when he came up with it he thought, oh, yeah, this is going to be a platform for hypersensitive teenagers <laughs> to scream at each other because they're offended about trivial shit uh, it just kind of morphed into that. <laughs> I, I, I actually went on there a few days ago, and I used to follow it a lot because of the artists that would go on Tumblr. And all you see are people bitching about every little thing. Like, oh, this art offends me because her boobs are too big. It's like, Jesus Christ, this is the internet. Grow the fuck up. Yeah, the, the Super Hulak community, that was funny as shit to me. I did not know that they flipped their shit over a Madden gif. I can't. I still have trouble understanding how half a million people could have gotten pissed off because somebody put up a shitty Madden generator GIF mocking their fandom. Uh, but that was that was like two or three years ago. So maybe maybe things have changed a bit. I know uh, it seems like at least some of the fandoms are open season now. You can make fun of them. Where some new ones have replaced them, and if you dare to say anything about them, you're going to get your fucking head ripped off. How far have you gotten into the Steven Universe fan base? That would be a good example. Uh, Steve, <laughs> that would be a good example of <laughs> one where they will rip nuts. your head off. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've noticed. I've noticed. Um, yeah, it, it, it's... I, I don't know how to describe it. It's a really weird fucking website right now. Um, it feels like a, there's a good portion of the user base that just wants to post the shit they want to post um, and just kind of banter back and forth, but there's a large majority uh, that are there who just can't handle it. 
and want to try to bring a hammer down on anything that might offend them. Have you seen, um, and I know you, you frequent DeviantArt. Did you see what happened with the new Beauty and the Beast movie? Now, would, okay, when you say what happened with the new Beauty and the Beast uh, movie, what was the lead actress's name? Was that Emma? Uh, yeah, Emma Watson, the, the ugly looking feminist. Yeah, okay, so are we talking about her interview where she basically admits she wants to fuck animals, or are we talking about the fan reaction to the there, movie? Wait, I'm sorry, go back. What about an interview? I want to go and find that what? Oh, yeah, Emma Watson was like, you know, uh, there's certain animals in movies that I think are hot, that I think are sexy. Like, I find, what's the lion's name from uh, <laughs> uh, The Witch in the Wardrobe or whatever? She she was talking about how she wanted to basically fuck a lion. She's like, yeah, it's hot. Well, that and explains she, how she got that she, part. Yeah, and then she got all freaked out. Uh, she's like, I'm seeing people nodding their heads. Uh, maybe we should talk about something else. <laughs> Oh, I didn't. I have to go find that. That's hilarious. I can't stand her anyway. But um, no. When fan art started to come out, and people were like redrawing her more as the cartoon version, which is you know the superior version, her fans were attacking people in like comment sections, and they were attacking artists, and they're like, she's a hundred times better than the cartoon version and shit like that. Like these people were <coughs> eating alive these poor artists. My experience with DeviantArt. Uh... Is either looking up really fucked up shit or getting really angry messages from deviant artists who were in videos. <laughs> I heard about uh, that. I, I, yeah, I had a few that were saying, "I'm gonna sue you," or "I'm gonna, I'm gonna hunt you down," and just really crazy shit. They they didn't take it very well. But there are a lot of a lot of people too, a lot of artists on there that think it's the videos are funny and think that different groups should be made fun of a little bit to lighten the fuck up. So it's kind of fifty fifty, really. Yeah, I showed your your uh, your stuff because my artist uses deviant art, and he thought they were hysterical. He goes, if you can't take laugh, why do you make things? Because he's Italian, so English isn't his first language. But he thought they were hysterical because he's gotten requests for that kind of weird shit. Yeah, a lot of artists. I, I've had a good amount of artists contact me and say, yeah, I know what it's like. Um, this is this is how I make money. <laughs> or I get pestered a lot to uh, to do this kind of stuff. Um, just, just, just a lot of messages like that. I feel bad for talented people that go on that platform and are looking to make a name for themselves because you're eventually going to be roped into – drawing a picture of some anthropomorphic animal taking a shit. You know what I mean? Like, eventually it's going to happen, regardless of the genre you're drawing. 50 bucks is 50 bucks. <laughs> that's, that's right. Money's money. But, um, so what is going to be your next DeviantArt video? Uh, the, the, there's, I, I don't know the term for it. I know what it is, but I don't know the specific term for it, but it's anthropomorphized um, inanimate objects. Basically, trains with faces, that kind of shit. That is the most uh, autistic they're... thing I've ever heard. You wait till you see the people. Because <laughs> I've seen uh, some of them in your videos, and I've seen some of them on like the front page of DeviantArt. But well, Man. yeah, that's the thing that, that I find fucked up. I almost every video I've done, um, regardless of whatever the fetish was or the interest was, I've noticed that there were at least a couple of accounts that all had the, something in common, and that was one of them. Like they all had like pictures of Thomas the Tank Engine or fucking airplanes drawn as people talking to each other and just doing weird shit together. I, I don't know what it is, but man, they love that shit. I blame cars. <laughs> it could be cars. It could be TV shows like Thomas. It, it could be a couple of different things, but fucking hell, they love that crap. Oh, that's just scary. That really is. And you know, as soon as you now, as soon as you open, especially you open up DeviantArt, I'm sure you get the most fucked up shit on your front page. Yeah, because apparently it tracks you, I guess, based on where you visit. Like I, I've noticed when I would go to look at groups when I was doing a video, it would show my little icon as having visited. So yeah, I'm probably on a fucking watch list somewhere by this point. <laughs> so are there any fandoms that you really, really want to go after in a video and just like take the piss out of like the Five Nights at Freddy's fandom? Which I know that would be an easy target, but. It's still be yeah, I, shit. Five Nights at Freddy, I'll eventually get around to. Uh, Sonic is one that I really want to do. Oh, God. You know, not every Sonic fan is insane, but God damn if a lot of them aren't. Uh, that's, uh, well, aside from, like, the trains and the planes with faces and shit, uh, that's another one that I've seen a lot of. There's a fuck ton of fetish art about Sonic the Hedgehog and his associated characters. I'm not sure why that is, but way more than Mario, for whatever reason. So does that mean you're going to be doing like Chris Chan and things like that, or you're not going to hit the easy targets? No, it wouldn't. It, it'd be confined to DeviantArt. I usually try to keep it 
could uh. find onto the website. Um, so it wouldn't be something that like I'm going to bring in Christian. I mean, Sonic choose its own fucking thing <laughs> and its own clusterfuck. I, I you know, I'll, pro I'll probably have a reference or two to Christian just because of the uh, GameStop incident where he maced somebody. But uh, aside from that, uh, not a, no, I'm not going to really cover him. I wonder how much fan art of Sonic was on DeviantArt. You know what? Now I'm going to have to look that up later. A lot. A lot of fucking shit. <laughs> on that so, uh, other than, than Sonic and anthropomorphic... Really? Anthropomorphic trains? God, why does that have to be a thing? Yeah, yeah. Are you, are you going to ever do anything like um, the way feti people fetishize things like Disney, which, good God, some of that stuff is scary. Yeah, I mean, there'll be bigger episodes. Like, the Sonic one would be a bigger episode because it's so much shit. Um, there'll probably be one about Disney. Uh, there's probably going to be one. Five Nights at Freddy would be another bigger one. Uh, just because of all the shit related to it. Because it, it, it's like a focal point for every other fetish. You know what I mean? So you, you do a video on Sonic, you've got 384 different varieties of kink in there. Uh, and so with larger stuff like that, yeah, it's going to be a bunch of different fucking shit. Are you just going to uh, do a giant video of every kink you've managed to find? No, no, that would be way too long. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, the, as far as defense goes, there's there's a lot of fucking material to work with. Now, other than DeviantArt and, of course, the um, Channel Awesome, which, what made you want to go after Channel Awesome? I'm curious. Well, I was going to do a video series on it a long time ago, but it, it just was kind of a daunting task, so I put it aside to do other shit. Uh, but people really wanted to see it. Uh, so when I opened up the Patreon, I told people that they could choose whatever they wanted as a, a, like a reward or whatever. Um, you know, how they have different tiers and shit on there, and then people are like, well, you get this and this and this. And I was like, well... I don't really care if you're giving a buck or a grand. You know, you, if you're giving something, I want to try to give something back. So I, I held a poll and asked them, what do you want to see? And that was the one that won above every other. They like, we want to see the that guy with the glasses series. So that's why the first video is coming out at the end of the month. And there should be about seven of them. And then it'll be done. Hmm. Okay, so I got to ask, since you probably already started doing research, is Spoonie still alive? Uh, Spoonie is still alive, but he's kind of on autopilot. Um, it, it's really weird with him. He had a Patreon where he's making, I think, about fifty one hundred at one point, uh, monthly. And you know, the the guarantee he gave with that was, I'm going to make a Spoonie movie. You know, I'm going to do all this great stuff. And for like the last two to three years, he's put out maybe a handful of videos outside of talking about wrestling or maybe talking about a movie he saw. But but it, it's like he just gave up. It's really, really bizarre. It's like he doesn't want to do anything. And over time, that $5,100 he was making on Patreon because people are interested in his content has dropped down to like, I think he's at like 900 bucks now. So he's lost a shit ton of support because people have been waiting and waiting and waiting for like, you know, when's the Spoonie movie? One or more uh, Final Fantasy reviews? When are you going to do more movie reviews? When are you going to do more projects? I just don't think he cares. It feels like he just wants to curl up and die. So hopefully he stays around long enough for me to do the fucking video. Because I like last stream I was I I was in of his that I was watching it. He seemed really like he was just nonstop attacking the stream, like the chat and stuff. It was really weird from seeing his older videos to seeing now. Something made him snap. Yeah, I I don't know what it is. Um, I I fucked around with him for a while, uh, maybe six or seven months ago. Uh, talking about uh, gone, but uh, or no Juan, but not forgotten, because his brother shot a Mexican. Oh, so that's we, what that joke yeah, comes from. Yeah, yeah. So we were making jokes about that, um, but he got really angry. He got angry to the point where if you mentioned my name, if you said Jim or Medicar, he would ban you instantly from his streams. <laughs> um, yeah, he doesn't he doesn't handle banter really well. I mean, it, it, it's weird um, watching him react. If you say something he doesn't like in one of his YouTube streams or whatever he's doing. He'll just, he'll ban you. He doesn't even give a shit. Um, he's kind of like walled himself off. I, I, I saw somebody in your chat mention that he fell prey to Twitter. Uh, probably. I, it's just, it's hard to pin down, but he's kind of just gone off the deep end, I guess. Well, they're saying that he's talked about being depressed. That might be it. I, okay, but here's my thing, right? What, is, what would he have to be depressed? I mean, I get it. You have stuff in your life that's going to make you sad. Fine. But... At one point, he was making five fucking grand on Patreon, and he had hundreds of thousands of people that loved the shit he did. You know what I mean? So you'd figure that would be somewhat of an ego boost. That would have to make him feel somewhat better. 
but he he didn't really give a shit. I mean, he didn't give a shit that people were supporting him or that they were fans of him. It seemed like he was almost resentful of it or that he disliked their support. And he just kind of withdrew into himself. And it, it's weird to me to see that. Like, if you're going to set up a Patreon thing, you should stick to what you say you're going to do. Um, or at the very least, try to. And if you fuck up, at least admit something came up or I have to adjust it a little bit. But he just he just tuned the fuck out. It, it reminds me of like those um, Kickstarter campaigns where they put up this video or they put up a campaign and they talk about all this great shit they're going to do. And the second they get the money, they never update until three years later. You heard that the thing completely collapsed and all the money's gone. So it, it's just it's I, I don't fucking know, man. The Internet is weird. Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to defend him, but if he's, like, manic depressant, that would explain it a lot, because I've seen manic depressants, like, they can't get happy no matter what for a while. But again, we don't know with him, because he doesn't talk about it. Yeah, but I guess my counter to that would be, he's been doing videos, I mean, fuck, he, he started doing videos on YouTube back around the time that um, AVGN did, Armic 21 you know, like, the first wave of kind of video game reviewers. Uh, and so he, he's been doing it for a fucking decade at this point. Uh, and I don't remember him ever being like this. Like, if he's manic depressive, he had it under control for, like, seven years. So, I, I again, I don't know what's changed, but something has. And it's just, yeah, it's weird, weird watching it. Maybe it has to do with him leaving Channel Awesome, or uh, that guy with the glasses, kind of, because the, the whole comments that he made about tying up a chick in his basement. <laughs> uh, so it, that could have a part of it. I, I, I don't know. I, I've heard some stories, too, behind the scenes, and it'll be touched on in the videos from people that used to work at that guy with the glasses, like from its founding onward, about some some interesting things about some of the personalities, and Spoonie was one of them. See, now I'm really curious to see those videos, because I really would like to know, because I did really like him in the beginning, and then when I went to a couple of his live streams, I was like, wow, he's kind of an asshole. Yeah, no, I liked his early videos, too. I mean, I used to watch him when he was on YouTube, you know, back in the day when he was putting up a fucking, like, Bio Billy reviews. Uh, <clears throat> and then I saw his Final Fantasy stuff. I thought that was really great. So I, I've seen a lot of his content. He used to put out really great stuff. But, it, yeah, it, he just, uh, he changed. He really has over the last three or four years. Okay, so there, are, somebody asked for you to go, are you ever going to uh, go um, talk with Destiny again? No, I, I did a debate with him, God, it was like three months ago, four months ago. Uh, somebody messaged me on Twitter and said, do you want to debate uh, Destiny? He wants you to come on your uh, his stream. I didn't even know who the fuck he was. Uh, so I went on, and I wasn't really sure what the fuck we're going to talk about. It was like a two-hour shit show. <laughs> and then at the end of it, I was like, okay. What, I went and played video games, and he did whatever the fuck he did. But I, I've seen all the shit surrounding him since then, because he's debated like 80 fucking people. Um and seemed to <laughs> he seems seemed like a bit of an idiot. A, seemed to have a bit of a a, a, a tism fit after <laughs> one of his more recent debates where he went off on for whatever reason he went off on graphic artists. He he went off on like you know people that draw art and do that kind of shit saying that they should all be super rich and if they're not super rich it's because they're lazy and stupid. Which oh, is fuck like him. Right, which is weird because he had all these people coming on and saying, do you know how hard it is to do the shit we do? Like, animating's not fucking easy. It takes a lot of time. Um, and then <laughs> then there was one tweet. This I found funny. He actually said to somebody who runs, like, a, a pretty well-known uh, studio that does a lot of fucking work. He told the guy, um, if you need me to help you get famous and make money, uh, hit me up. Because he had no idea who the guy was or the oh, studio was. Christ. I'm working on an animation uh, GoFundMe. Uh, with some animators I know, and I can tell you, for what we did, and we had under 20 days to do it originally for Disney, is a lot of work. He can go fuck himself. <laughs> yeah, he, he seemed to make it uh, sound like if you're an animator, it should only take you a week to do like a five minute animation, and if, you oh, know, if God, you're not pumping no. out, yeah, if you're not pumping out animations, like, you know, five to ten minutes long, four times a month, and making hundreds of thousands of dollars doing it, then you're obviously a fuck up and don't know what you're doing. I, I don't draw and I don't animate, but I know people that do, and I know it takes a fuck ton of time and work to do it. Oh yeah, it's it's always. And I I used to be an animator. It's always those that have never done it that'll say that kind of thing. And just to do five minutes, that would be depending on how much animation. That's a couple of months. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but no, no, no. You, you got to get it done one, two, three, right? Yeah, you should be able to just pump it out. It's it's weird. 
Yeah, maybe if you're drawing the stick figures. Well, yeah, yeah, that you should be able to pump out a thousand <laughs> of those a day uh, to make all all that money. But um, yeah, it just I, I don't know why. It, the weird thing, the thing that I thought was bizarre about it was I don't understand why he suddenly went after them. Like it seems so far out of what he was talking about. Like he'd gotten done, I think, debating Naked Ape and Sargon and a couple other people, and for whatever reason, he just completely shifted from that and went into this whole thing, bitching at uh, animators and getting into a fight with them. Maybe he's just mad nobody will animate for him? Who, who knows? Uh, he has a sizable following. I mean, you know, from his StarCraft days and just kind of the uh, the Twitch stuff, he's got a sizable following of people, and he makes a good amount of money doing it. Uh, so, you know, who knows? Fuck. I, I, I kind of paid attention to what's going on with it, but it's more like, oh, yeah, so that happened. It's kind of like watch it because uh, you like a little bit of a shit show but I'm not really paying too close attention to it so I don't really know where it kind of went after he got into a little bit of a fight with them so who knows so I've got to ask something because you you've uh, talked with a lot of people on podcasts and stuff like that when you did the one with that one game designer how did you not kill that man are you talking about Dino Dini yes or, because Dini, when he Dino shushed you I thought I was like I would have lost it well, yeah, he contacted. What? How did that even start? Uh, I was talking about Sean. Is it Sean Murray, the guy that did uh, I think No Man's so. Sky? Yeah, and talking about what a cunt he is. And this guy shows up and starts bitching me out, saying I don't know shit. And Sean Murray's a fucking saint. Uh, it turns out he made games. You know, he and he did. He made really popular games back in the day. Uh, this Dino Dini guy or whatever. Um, eventually, go on to stream with him, and it's just. The mentality he had was what pissed me off. He acted like, if you're a game designer, you're special. Nobody else can do what you do. No other job is as hard as your job, and nobody understands it. So as a fan, you just need to have faith. You need to believe what you're told from a developer or a publisher and take it on their word that things are happening because uh, the reasons they state they're happening. And my counterargument to that was, you're making a product just like anybody else that produces something or provides a service, you're charging me money for something and you're telling me what that something is. Now, if I give you money for it and it's not what you've told me it is, I either want a really good explanation for what the fuck happened or I want my fucking money back. And he was like, no, 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 that's the wrong attitude to have. You need to understand we're special and gifted. Fuck off with that. Yeah, it, it was infuriating listening to that kind of that kind of logic. I, I think he, I, I, I don't get it. I really don't. I don't see that being acceptable in any or any other industry. I don't see people in films or television saying that. I don't see people making fucking cars saying that. You know, like if I buy your product or service and it's not as you described it, you fucked up, not me. And so, yeah, I, you can understand the customer's going to be pissed about it. Yeah, but that seems to be a mentality that's going around because, um, and I don't know if you follow feminism. I'm not a feminist. Fuck that kind of shit. But, um, you know, they're making a Captain Marvel movie. Uh, no, I didn't. I see. I don't. I, I don't watch a lot of the cape shit. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> like when it comes to comics, I'm not watching those movies. For me, it hit the point where it's almost like you know how zombies were fucking everywhere for about yeah. five years. That's what it feels like with superhero movies. Like I've burnt out on that shit at this point. No, I can agree with you on that. But I happen to be like browsing Facebook and I saw the chick playing Captain Marvel, going, "I'm doing it for all females to show that they're empowered." So I put basically as a female, I'm like, "Will you shut the fuck up about that?" We don't need you and shit like that. And the first comment I got was, you should appreciate what she's doing for you and go see the movie when it's out. I'm like, what is she doing for me? Yeah, see, that, that marketing technique doesn't work. You know, trying to guilt people into to watching or consuming something because it's for the greater good, right? I mean, if, if that argument held any water, Ghostbusters would be, you know, in the billions as far as profit goes rather God, than 250 Right, rather than two hundred and fifty million in the hole for their worldwide marketing budget, they what was it? Uh, uh, Feig had said that they needed to make at least a half a billion dollars to break even for production cost and marketing, and they've made I think around two hundred and eighty million. So they're fucked. I mean that that movie tanked as far as the finances is concerned. So you know this whole argument that oh we're doing it for for all the women out there, or we're doing it for this great cause, and you need to support us for that. We're going to guilt you into, you know, consuming this doesn't fucking work. People didn't like the product because it was a shitty movie. Mm -hmm. So if Captain Marvel is a shitty movie, it won't matter who the fuck starring in it or what the reason for starring in it is. Nobody's going to go watch it. 
Well, it's it's going to be nothing but feminist propaganda. Just by what she's been saying, I went, you know, I was looking forward to this. Now, fuck. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, I, I don't know. I, studios will have to keep producing this crap, and it'll have to keep sinking before they finally catch on, and they're like, forget it. We need to go back to basics and make entertaining movies, and that will make us money, rather than trying to do movies about causes uh, to make us money, because it just, it... No, I, I like. I'm not gonna go into the movie theater and give you money to watch something because it's some fucking social justice cause. I'm gonna go into a theater and watch something because it's a good fucking movie. You make a good movie, you'll make a shit ton of money. Make one about a cause, and you're not gonna make a fucking cent back. That's just the the cold hard facts of it. I don't understand why studios are grasping with that that idea these days. Well, it's either that or everything has to be a remake, which is getting annoying. Yeah, every everything's getting remade. Uh, the, what are they? They're redoing the Matrix now, or they're talking about it. Um, yeah, they announced which, uh, Escape from New York is now getting a remake for some reason, except yeah, with just, modern twists. It, it's just weird. But uh, Hollywood's always done that, though. I mean, shit's always getting remade. <clears throat> Sometimes yeah, the take, remakes are better. Most of the time, not. Yeah, they'll take it and recycle it to try to make as much money as they can out of it because they think it's a, a sure, like a sure thing. Like if we take this movie we know did a billion dollars. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting over a cold. That's if we fine. take this movie that you know did a, a billion dollars ten years ago and we remake it now, well, we are guaranteed it's going to be successful because they liked it back then. It really is a crapshoot. It might it might do well, but it's not really guaranteed. Now, somebody asked in the chat, uh, "What is your favorite genre of movie?" Ah, oh, fuck. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, let me think. Um, now I forgot his fucking name. Hold on, let me look up the actor's name, and then I can. Tell you what, uh, oh Kenneth Branagh. Uh, like I like I like Kenneth Branagh movies, which are usually really boring slow movies. He does a lot of Shakespeare stuff, so I liked him in Hamlet. I really liked him in Othello. Uh, those kind of movies I like. Um, <clears throat> uh, Red Violin. I watched. I like that. Uh, that should give you, I guess, some kind of an idea of the kind of shit I watch. So really boring shit <laughs> is the answer to that. Is what I enjoy. I don't know. That's a bit of a surprise to me, but everybody likes Shakespeare and things like that. So. If, if it's well done, if it's well done, they like it. There have been some Shakespearean movies that have been fucking dog shit uh, over the last, like, two decades. But Rana usually is involved with stuff that's good. Yeah, it's, he's kind of like a seal of quality, at least for me, as far as those particular types of movies are concerned. Okay, they're asking now. I hope you don't mind answering questions from the chat room. No, that's fine. Go ahead. Uh, they're asking, do you watch anime? Are you a weeaboo? Be honest. Yeah, no, I watch anime. I watch anime. I play video games. I mean, that that I think people know that. Um, Legend of the Galactic Hero uh, is one that I really, really like. Uh, that got brought up on poll because they're like, it's it's a red pilled anime, but it, it's it's basically politics in space, which again is really boring if you're not looking for that. But it's like 120 episodes of war and politics in space, which is fucking amazing. Um, aside from that, I, I usually watch kind of whatever's new. Um, yeah, yeah, that I, I, yeah, I like anime, but Any probably of the not. Any newer ones you really enjoying? You're gonna have name some off, and I'll tell you if I like them or not. Uh, there's like uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Haven't seen it. Uh, it's really good. I think you'd probably get a good chuckle out of it. Um, Relife is an interesting one because it's about what if you could go back to high school for a year. I think the the newest one I watched was the uh, Japanese Defense Force propaganda anime uh, Gate. If you know what I'm talking about, where yeah, they, they get invaded, it. yeah, they get invaded by the fantasy world, and they go there with tanks and jets and fuck them up. That was pretty. That was pretty fucking entertaining. I like that. I've still got to watch that one. So, are there like uh, any really older ones that you that you're a big fan of that you go back and watch without any like just go back and watch them when you're bored? Yeah, but I mean, it, it's it's the typical cliched fucking answers. Like if I you know Cowboy Bebop, like everybody watches that. You know what I mean? So it's it's nothing that's going to surprise anybody. It's not like I'm going to name some really fucking obscure 80s thing. People are going to be like, I've never heard of that. Or, oh, I didn't expect that. It, uh, the classics, the stuff that is generally popular is popular because it was pretty well made or it had a good story or it had good characters. So that kind of shit I get into. Um, yeah, like I, I watched Gate recently. Um, what's the other one? Is it Overlord? Is that the one I'm thinking about? The gamers oh, get I've been stuck wanting in. to see that one. Is it good? Yeah, yeah, I liked it. I watched that. Um there was a couple others that I oh oh I watched uh, one I didn't like I watched uh, I think it's prison school it's about three dudes three or four guys that go to like a all female school and they get put in 
school or like school jail and get taunt it, it's it's fucking awful i was bored to tears watching that but I, I watched the whole fucking series but did not like it well if you like um there's an older anime i'm a fan of and the entire chat that knows me is gonna groan it's called blackjack you might find that one interesting it's about a doctor like yeah, if you like uh, the slower paced ones yeah check it out um yeah so i you know i'll, I'll watch new stuff i'll watch old stuff but i, yeah, I generally enjoy anime i it, some stuff i i steer away from like you know, Naruto, I don't want to watch 500 episodes. Bleach, I don't want to watch 600 episodes. Uh, One Piece, I don't want to watch fucking 3,800 episodes. Uh, it, maybe they're good, maybe they're not, but it's like a really big fucking investment to get into. I've been watching, uh, what is it, Dragon Ball Super. I thought that was that was pretty entertaining. It felt like old DBZ shit to me. It, it's okay. I feel some of it jumps around a little bit too much. I kind of miss... And, and I know a lot of people don't like it, but I kind of miss how some of the older arcs for Dragon Ball Z were kind of longer... And kind of stretched it out, gave you more story and stuff. Just feels like sometimes with Super, it just keeps going on, 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 like boom, boom, boom. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think the thing for me is as long as it's not fucking GT, I'm happy. I think that's so, what everybody has to say. Right. As long as it's not GT, I'm good. And so far, Super has not been that. So I'm <laughs> fine with it. Yet. We've yet to see if they're going to bring, because they've already said GT is its own universe. We may end up seeing that. Right, right. But yeah, so far it's been it's been pretty good, I thought. I, I get what you're saying, but yeah, I've liked it though. So, and I've seen many people have asked, have asked this in the chat. Jim, how big mm -hmm. is your dick? Yeah, I don't know why that question is still popular. <laughs> uh, use your imagination. Take a guess. Take a guess and there you go. There you go, guys. He's got the biggest dick on the internet. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Which is quite the accomplishment because every guy on the internet's got a fucking 12 inch cock from what I understand, right? Because everybody's so honest about this on the internet. <laughs> well, according to some people, I'm a dude with a giant dick, so what do you want? Right, we all need wheelbarrows to walk around and carry it in. That's just the way the internet is. <laughs> so with video games, what do you think of the whole Mass Effect Andromeda shit that's going on? Yeah, I didn't buy the uh, the guy that went and worked with uh, Naughty Dog, right? The ex-developer was talking yeah. about facial animations and kind of giving excuses. I, he's like, oh, well, they're using a program to do it rather than going in by hand. If you're going to – like, if you're going to invest all this money, right, into this product and it's a fucking dialogue-heavy RPG, right? I mean, it's the story of Mass Effect and we have all these character interactions and they're talking about how many voiceovers they have in the game. Like, all these NPCs, they speak. So if, if dialogue and conversation and story is such a big focus for your RPG, maybe get the fucking fan or facial animations working because that seems kind of goddamn important. You know, you, you could maybe take a minute to just tweak all of those. I get that they're under time constraints. I get that the program they used didn't work to the, uh, to the best that they had hoped it would. But it, it looks so fucking bad. It just looks so goddamn terrible. And some of the uh, conversations are so stilt or like stilted and weird. I, I've really gotten sick of Bioware. Like, it, it, maybe I'm alone here, but you know, sometimes when I play an RPG, or if I'm going into space, or if I'm going to fight the big evil dragon under the mountain, I don't want to fuck everybody that I'm doing that with. Yeah, it, seems it is to... kind of weird how they're so obsessed with that. Right? Like, sometimes I just want to go on a fucking adventure to save stuff. Like, let me save the galaxy. Let me save the kingdom. I don't need to fuck every single person going along with me to do that. But no, for whatever reason, if it's a Bioware title, you need to have sex with literally everyone. That is the focus of their development at this point, and it's so fucking bizarre. It's even weirder, because from what I've been reading and understood, like, isn't most of the Mass Effect people, like, the ones working on the new one, aren't they a bunch of SJWs? Wouldn't they, like, hate sex? So all I've ever seen are SJWs go insane when it comes to sex. Like, I've had them go after me for my icon, because it's too sexualized. Yeah, yeah. From what I understand, okay, I remember um, Hamburger Helpler, right? That <laughs> chick that was involved. Uh, she wrote all these really weird fanfic stories about CIA agents uh, having gay sex to stop an alien invasion. Because and that's that about seems done. right. That seems about par for the course for the crap they were putting in, like Mass Effect Three. Um, I don't know who the fuck it is that's writing this shit or coming up with the story arcs and the character interactions. But enough is enough already. Focus on the big bad evil and what you're doing out there and the fucking alien. Like, you're writing a story. You're writing a fucking space opera, right? And you're focused on whether these two idiots are going to bang each other. I don't give a shit. I want to know about the aliens. I want to know about what humans are going to do, what's happening on Earth, what happened after the last Mass Effect games. 
I don't give a shit about how many times I can fuck my crewmates. It, it like they did that with um, what was it? Um, Saints Row Four, I think it was. But at least then it was funny and it was an obvious joke. Right. Like I'm not saying you can't have sex involved or you can't have character relationships involved, but it just feels like that has become the core focus rather than a secondary aspect of the game. Maybe and that's I think all that's... Bioware is good at now is like. Sex. Yeah, that's that. That's what I think. That's where they fucked up. I think that they've they're they're too focused on it, and they've lost the plot as far as what makes a good game, and where they should be putting their efforts. Um, yeah, I, I I don't know why, but like I can't name a recent Bioware game where you can't fuck everyone. <laughs> like, th and that's so weird because I can't really think of another company that has that standard. Like, I mean, can can you can I you do... name another company <laughs> where that does that as a focus? I play porn games on my channel, and even then, you can get away with not fucking a character and still beat the game right right but yeah it, it's just it's 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 bizarre but yeah it, as far as andromeda goes it just it doesn't look fun to me it doesn't look fun and frankly the animations look fucking awful i i wouldn't i wouldn't want to pay 60 bucks to play it i just wouldn't i can't i can't understand how ea would have allowed that because and i know pro i know game uh designers and stuff if an engine doesn't work, no matter how far you're in development, if it's that bad and this and Andromeda looks terrible, you would move on to a different engine, especially for the facial animations. There's no they they had to have been doing it on purpose, and that means nobody's gonna want to see that thing have sex because imagine that O face. That's gonna be terrifying. Right. Well, somebody said uh, in, in your chat, uh, "Sex sells." It always has. I mean, that is true, but. <sighs> what is the demographic they're marketing this towards and what is the product they're saying it is like if if they want to make a sex game make a fucking hentai game right go ahead go go completely nuts have people getting fucked by tentacles in the ship but like this soft core approach nobody likes that nobody wants to play a soft core game where they're getting a little aroused by what's happening but they they don't really get taken over the edge like who wh who are you marketing that towards either make a fucking game or make a hentai game but don't do this cock teasing in the middle shit <laughs> If you want to do sex cells, then do sex cells, Bioware. But don't don't cock tease me with the uh, fucking awful relationships and the three minute long stilted animation of them floating in fucking zero G wrapping around each other. Like it's just awful. The game is awful. I it makes me wonder if Bioware is going to be around after this because of the whole fiasco. I can't imagine EA is going to let them be a studio anymore after this shit. Uh, I don't know. I, I guess it comes down to sales numbers. How many copies of the game have they shipped? If they shipped enough, EA will keep them around till the fucking sun dies. Uh, it, it depends on how profitable it's been. I, I don't know what the sales numbers on Andromeda are. I don't know how well it's done. I haven't really been keeping up with it. Oh, I did see like two days after it was released, it was it was already having a major sale on Amazon and stuff. Yeah, that's never a good sign. When you've got a, a <laughs> brand new game that's going on sale right away, is usually a really fucking bad sign of things that are going on. Like, when I heard, as soon as I heard it was going to have softcore porn in it, or what they considered, I'm like, oh, this is going to be awful. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, I don't even know what the main, the main plot of the game is. I have it just, like, a, a basic idea of kind of what it's about, but it, it just, yeah, there's nothing about it, I guess, that makes me think, oh, I've got to go play this. Like, I need to continue the story of which colored ending I'm going to continue from. <laughs> is it going to be the universe of green or blue or red? Like, it, the, you know, it kind of, Bioware kind of killed it for me with their with their series, uh, what I they did at the end of 3. I have heard, like, when you start off this the Andromeda from someone that played it, they told me, like, as soon as you meet your, I guess, co-pilot or whatever the fuck she is, like, the first thing she says is, hi, I'm trans. And it's like, why? Why are you telling me this? Hi, I know we're fleeing the Earth as a plan B for the uh, the uh, catastrophe that's coming our way, but let's talk about our sexual orientation <laughs> and our pronouns. How about, bitch, uh, I'm trying to run from the big bad evil and establish a future for humanity. Who fucking cares what your pronouns are? I just shot her out of fucking airlock. <laughs> like, we've, we've got shit to do here. What are you talking about? And this is why Jim's not allowed to be a space captain. That's right. There'd be a lot of dead floating people. See, I'd love to see somebody like, the, again, like the guys that did Saints Row, just completely take the piss out of Andromeda and do like another space game where like the first time somebody says that, you're like, all right, up the fucking airlock. Because that would yeah, be funny. Like, yeah, we have more important things to focus on than this. What, what the fuck are you wasting my time with this conversation for? Such a bad writing. How the fuck do, how do these people get jobs? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I have no idea how 
they're they're searching for talent and what the criteria to get a job there is. Probably the same kind of criteria as uh, what was it? Uh, I almost said Big Hero Six. No, um, Mighty Number no. Nine. One of them was actually good, and that's not Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah, that game was that that game was dog shit too. And fucking unstable frame rate, terrible looking effects, uh, and then the whole backstory with the community manager and uh, Dina treating people like shit. Uh, not not a great not a great product in the end. And it looks like uh, was it Yoko whatever the Banjo Kazooie ripoff is going to be this is going to go down the same route. Yeah, it it seems like people are a lot madder uh, than I, I think the company is acknowledging. Like just following the Steam forums, uh, they're really pissed. And the the weird thing is, if you go to look at like promo videos of the uh, game, people doing like er, early previews or reviews of it. Uh, a lot of the comments focus around JonTron and being angry at the company for how it was treating people curious about refunds or voicing their opinion about where the product is going. Um, I, I think that when you kind of separate the voice acting thing with JonTron from how they behave towards customers, I think that's kind of like the big difference people need to focus on. They treated people that gave money and were financially interested in the product terribly. They made fun of them, and then they banned them, and they locked uh, threads, and they kicked them off websites. And that's a fucking terrible approach that will never work out well. That's what sunk Mighty Number no. 9 and created a lot of resentment for it. Like if you have a fan base that is supportive of you, they will be willing to forgive little minor fuck ups. And Mighty Number no. 9 was terrible, but maybe if they had uh, you know, a fan base that didn't feel like they were being treated like shit, they would have been more forgiving and it would have been more financially successful for them. With the, you know, ukulele, you're already making people angry so it, you better hope it's a really good game because if it has flaws in it, the people that would normally be there to kind of boost it up and say, well, I can forgive it because I really love the company and I love the people and I love the product, they're gone because you told them you don't give a shit about their anime avatar and they can go fuck themselves. Now, do you think uh, that this is ruining those of us that are trying to run like legitimate Kickstarters and stuff like that? Because like, I'm trying to run one for an animated series. And no, not like the one that you talked about in one of your videos. But it seems like so many people, and I've gotten so many messages, and they're like, you know, how do we know that you're going to give us what you're promising, even though you have, you know, you have this out there, this out there as proof. You know, they just keep using Mighty Number no. 9 and the rest of them as proof. Do you think it's kind of killed those that are legitimately trying to raise money? I think that if you're, you know, if you're going to try to do a Kickstarter now or an Indiegogo now or, or some kind of a fundraising campaign, yeah, you're, you're going to have a lot of shit that you've got to deal with. People are really wary of it. They've been burned a lot. Um, but there are successes. There are companies that have done really good products, uh, put out games that were really good. Um, what was it? Uh, is it Shovel Knight? It's the one that did uh, a fundraising campaign, Did and it's a great game. I haven't heard anybody really say, oh, it's terrible. It didn't turn out good. It turned out great. Uh, people have put products out that have turned out well. But yeah, people have been burned so much over the last three years that if you're putting a product out and there's fundraising involved, you're going to have to really go that extra effort to prove to people that you're legitimate and on the level, which I think comes down to updating a lot, you know, showing progress, responding to people that are trying to get a hold of you, even if it gets really fucking tiring and you've got to, you know, you feel like you're dedicating a lot of time to it. And I'm sure it gets draining the bigger the project is. But, you know, by updating people and trying to keep in contact with them, I think it allays some of those fears and makes people feel like, okay, well, this person's different. They're not trying to fuck me. They're they're being on the level when they say they want to do whatever this project is. Uh, I know Retsupre kind of moved away from making fun of LPs and do their, you know, Kickstarter, no-starter videos. Go watch those, and that, that will show you how not to do it because the shit they highlight is fucking ridiculous. Um, people putting out just terrible products or, or putting up really horrible descriptions or never updating uh, that's like one of the biggest complaints I hear from people when they talk about a project like that, you know, when they're, somebody's trying to raise money and they've either gotten it or they're in the process of getting it. It seems like a lot of people get really mad and I don't blame them. Like if I can contribute to uh, some kind of a campaign, I want to at least know what the fuck is going on. That doesn't mean you have to tell me every day what you're doing, but like maybe once a month, you know, like just put something up and say, hey, this is where we are. This is what we're doing. This is where the money went and this is how far along we are. Um yeah, it'd be a clusterfuck. If I, like, I would not want to do uh, a Kickstarter Indiegogo because I know that to make it work and to make people feel comfortable, it would require a lot of hands-on time to show them that uh, that progress is being done. So 
if you're going to do that kind of project, I, I guess I would say, yeah, get ready to invest a lot of time assuring your community and your financial backers that you're doing what you say you're doing. Yeah, it is kind of a nightmare. My personal favorite thing is when people contact and go things like, are any of these characters gay? Because I don't want to fund it if it doesn't have diversity. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> this is I, something I, that happens. I actually had somebody um, say that our main character wasn't black enough. And she's not black I, to begin with. Well, then I guess that, well, technically they're right then, aren't they? They aren't black enough if I'm they're like, not black. Oh. It's a black and white cartoon <laughs> character. Does that count? Yeah, I, uh, with those kind of responses, I guess you're going to have to play it by ear. Uh, I'm talking more about the people that are being realistic, you know, not the nut yeah. cases that are going to contact you and be like, well, I, you know, I'm offended about this. Well, go fucking be offended somewhere else. I don't <laughs> give a shit. I, I'm just talking about the people that are like, hey, you know, I threw 20 bucks your way because I, I was interested in what you're doing. Can you at least kind of tell me what's going on? As long as you stay on top of that and you're like, yeah, here's what, what here's where we are. Here's what we're doing. You'll be fine. But it, it's those campaigns that don't do that and just go really silent or completely disappear that give Kickstarter and Indiegogo and fundraising a bad name. And it happens so often. That's why people are so fucking freaked out about it and really, really paranoid about contributing because they just don't want to get screwed. And so many people have gotten screwed. Yeah, I'll never understand why they can't just put up a thing like once a month and go, yeah, we're working on it. You know, here's here's a little bit of a product picture or something. It's so dumb that they don't that, that they don't update. And then they're like, I don't understand why these people are asking for their money back. Right, right. I, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it, it, yeah, again, it just kind of comes down to, it really is, it's communication. The more communicative, or communicative you are uh, in regards to what's going on, the easier it will be, um, and people will feel more comfortable. But yeah, as far as like crazy fucking people, you're going to get crazy people that are going to ask you fucking ridiculous shit about whatever your project is. I get fucking crazy, you know, with videos, I get crazy people showing up. Because they don't get sarcasm or they don't get a joke or they don't understand what's going on. I had some people that were like, are these X-File videos? Are those are those, are those, those serious? Are you being for real? <laughs> like, fucking no, of course not. I'm making fun of fucking spooky copypasta shit videos that you see everywhere. That's, that's what do you mean? Is that for real? Are you fucking retarded? So, yeah, you're always going to get people like that, <laughs> regardless I, of whatever it is you're doing. I love when you do those videos because you can always hear when you're trying so hard not to laugh. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's silly fucking dumb shit on the internet. Uh, it, it is hard to keep a straight face, but um, yeah, yeah. I, I like I said though, I'd recommend go go watch like Kickstarter failure videos because you get a really good idea of why a lot of fucking products just completely sink. Uh, it's either a really terrible idea or if it's a decent idea, they just never keep on top of it and piss everybody off that's supporting it. Have to check them out. So uh, the the X file style videos. What made you want to do those exactly? Because uh, I like, like I, I like reading, uh, like I, I browse the paranormal board on 4chan. I, I like reading those kind of threads, but I got fucking sick and tired of how dead it was, and I got really fucking annoyed by the fact that it seems like any paranormal stuff or spooky shit has fallen into like this cookie cutter cliche formula of how things need to be done. Like everybody, like every fucking video you watch on YouTube related to anything paranormal is now got, you know, like that one shitty background track that plays throughout the whole video. The guy's doing his super serious voice as he talks about the fucking Redditor that disappeared from going on the deep web. Uh, and, you know, I got it's just it's mockable. It should be laughed at. Or every other thread was how do I summon a succubus because I want a fuck demon in my house? Or how do I create a tulpa because I'm lonely? Like enough of that shit, man. I've heard enough skinwalker fucking stories to last me a lifetime. Let's move on to something interesting. So when are we going to get the Slender Man and the Jeff the Killer videos? God, I hope you never do those. Yeah, yeah, let's let's do a Slender Man video and talk about the crazy 12-year-old that stabbed her friend 30 fucking times because she wanted to go live with Slender Man in the woods. How ridiculous is that shit? A fucking created character by the internet and this dumb 12-year-old thinks it's real and tries to kill her friend so she can go live with it. Yeah, like, but wasn't they're... it like didn't it come out that she didn't she just made that story up and that she was just going to kill the person the kid anyway? No, she was legitimately nuts. Holy uh, shit, why did they let her on the internet? Like schizo, she. There were two of them. Two girls uh, decided to do it, and they were going to do it on the girl's birthday, but decided for whatever reason to postpone it for a day. Uh, I'm sure the prosecutor probably argued that this is all fucking crazy, and who cares? But 
uh, as far as I understand it, she really thought they were going to go live in the magical woods with Slender Man and murder people for eternity. I don't, I don't know what paradise that is, but that's the idea she had. Oh, God. Jimmy, you'd fuck a succubus. <laughs> I just like yeah, to chat and see that. Yeah, yeah, you know, that that's my ideal date. I want to I want to fuck something imaginary. You know how many uh, this is this is what I love about a lot of this spooky paranormal shit too. You have all these people talking about like take Succubus for example. You have all these threads and all these websites and all these videos and all these promotional offers talking about Succubus or Succubi whatever the plural would be and how to summon them and have great demon sex. And yet, if if that were true at all, wouldn't you think somebody would have a fucking video up on Pornhub of them banging a succubus or, or some kind of fucking evidence of this shit happening? But that never fucking occurs, does it? See, now that you've said that, bullshit. it's going to happen. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Somebody make a video. Show me a succubus is real. I'd love <laughs> to fucking see that. Because I'm sure that's what some demon from the nether realm wants, is to fuck some fat, lonely neat that smells like Cheetos. I'm sure that is like at the top priority list of a demonic entity. It's like, I need me some neat cock. <laughs> oh god that was not something i ever wanted to hear you say <laughs> yeah that's that's what they're all clamoring for but um so what is your next uh x file video gonna be or you haven't decided yet uh flat earth <laughs> i wasn't expecting that <laughs> oh yeah yeah i got the amount of shit out there about flat earth yeah i love that shit I love how it's become a massive conspiracy by every private corporation and government on the planet, and even airline pilots. Everybody's in on the lie. I don't know if you're aware of this. The Earth is flat, and everybody's lying about it. Every company that puts up a satellite, every ship that goes into space, every airplane flying overhead, they're all, they're all connected. They've all sworn the secret oath to hide the fact that the Earth is flat. It scares me. Isn't there like a couple of celebrities that actually believe that, too? Yeah, there was one, uh, I, I can't remember his fucking name, but there was a rapper on Twitter who went on a tirade talking about how the Earth is totally flat. Uh, he brought up weird shit. Like, if you stand on a ladder, it's still flat. If you stand at the top of a building, it's still flat. Like, what? he couldn't wrap his head around the fact that curvature is not going to be as extreme and pronounced as you think it is, even if you're really high up on the fucking surface level. Like, you've got to get, you got to get pretty far up there to start to see that bend. Maybe if you're really high. You yeah, yeah, there that. you go. And get and get nice and toasted. Yeah, there you go. So, what made you want to do the uh, "Am I being detained?" videos? Which, God, I can't believe that people actually believe that shit. Because I find that I, I find that shit funny as hell. Like, I get it. Okay, I, I got a lot of complaints too from sovereign citizens and just people that are anti-police calling me a status bootlicker. <laughs> I get it. Like, you know, there are a lot of dirty cops out there. There are cops that do terrible shit. But you know, there's another fucking side to that. Man, like, imagine being a cop and having to deal with these fucking retards. You know, uh, there, there's a point where you've got to be able to look at the other side and laugh at this shit. I get it. I'm not saying cops are the greatest thing on earth, but imagine being a dude, you know, being a cop, you're employed, you pull somebody over for a speeding violation, and they're screaming, am I being detained? And they're saying that they're the high admiral of the seas, and they're a boat because they, they're driving. They're not driving a vehicle. They're traveling, and it's not a car. It's a land vessel. And, you know, the Articles of the Confederation say they can piss on your boot and you have to clap. Like, you know, just <laughs> the crazy fucking shit. And, like, all you want to do is give them the ticket because they're speeding and that's it. That's the end of the conversation. But no, 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 no. They want to argue it. Uh, there's one video where a chick, um, her boyfriend gets arrested for oh, yeah, not having Oh, yeah, they drag her out of the car or something and she starts screaming rape? Yeah, they get her out of the car and she starts screaming rape. Like, what the fuck are you doing? He's raping me. I'm being raped. Uh, there, there's another one. There were a lot of videos I didn't get to put in, but like the financial stuff I thought was funny as shit. Oh yeah, I didn't fully understand like what the fuck that meant that your name has like a value or something. Like I was like I was listening to the explanation of all that and I'm still like what? Yeah, I, I loved uh the one chick who was like, I'm gonna tell you how your birth certificate's worth millions and billions of dollars. But first I'd like to read a blog my friend Yarrow posted on Facebook. <laughs> And then she goes on to say, and you just sign any debt you have with your golden signature because you're an earth child. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? But they really do that. They write in red crayon on the fucking bill they get, uh, accepted for value. And then they put some random treasury number down and send it in and think that takes care of their debt. It doesn't. Uh, eventually it gets back to them. Both the IRS and the FBI have you know, pretty extensive articles up on their, their website saying, hey, listen, 
this doesn't actually work. You're wasting your time, and you could get into legal trouble for doing it. So why not just avoid it? You know what I mean? <laughs> don't don't try it. It's not going to work for you. You know it's bad if they have to put it up. They're like, stop being idiots. Right. Yeah. They're going from some. You know, <laughs> like they're they're using the the one of the definitions for certificate to try to state that you are considered property because of your birth. And that you know, the government is using um, loans taken out or you know money leveraged against the product, which would be you, uh, to finance themselves, and that you can tap into that money yourself, and it's worth millions of dollars. Like your birth certificate, for whatever reason, is the potential you could earn over your lifetime, and so it's rated at a certain rate. And all you have to do is write down a magical number, and the government will pay off any debt you have because you know the secret. Uh, but these groups, you know, there was one guy that that practices and again I didn't even get a chance to put it in the video but he would legally advise people to do this and I went and read up on his history and like some of the articles related to him every single person they brought up where he advised them or was connected to them at trial they all lost not a single one of them won you know they went to jail for tax evasion they went to jail for fraud they went to jail for bank fraud and all this other stuff and I'm like why would you listen to this guy if everybody that does goes to fucking prison because he has one hell of a good website <laughs> apparently, yeah. Apparently, it's a fucking great website. I, I didn't know that you could just magic your way out of debt. I, that's that's pretty impressive. Uh, you'd think that would cripple the economy if we're all worth millions of dollars and we don't ever have to pay any debts we have. It would now, pretty much fucking destroy everything. But no, apparently that's that's how it works. Now, when you were researching that, were you able to find out who started all of this shit? Because I was wondering who had started it all. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, the sovereign movement was started. Uh, fuck yeah, I did look into it. I I was probably gonna end up bringing it up in tape three, uh, which is the last one. There were just going to be three videos. Um, but basically it was a guy that just wanted to avoid paying taxes. That at the end of the day is what it was. Uh, and it didn't really work out for him. There's a couple of different things. Like there's a financial side of what a sovereign citizen is, which is separate from the people making arguments about authority. So it, it has like a multiple kind of like tangled up history. It's hard to really explain, but one guy just didn't want to pay taxes. Another guy thought that you could look up basically – there are uh, a thing referred to as blue book laws, which are like obscure legal code that nobody really knows about, and it's outdated, and it might not have been specifically addressed, but it's still kind of there. And so it feels like somebody was like, oh, I'll look up all these kind of like blue book laws and all these really specific, weird, outdated things and use that to argue my way out of a ticket or use that to argue my way out of being arrested or facing legal consequences. But they're bringing up shit that was addressed, Articles of Confederation, all these different fucking things. And... They try to use that to argue their way. Like, I'm not driving, I'm traveling. Like, you're, you're, it's sophistry. You're fighting over the definition of a word. It's not going to get you out of the trouble that you're in. So, it's basically, it started similar to how Scientology did. Well, no, because I don't think that the guy that started it was specifically looking to con people. Like, uh, Hubbard, you know, had quotes saying that if I want to make money, I'll just uh, create a bullshit religion or something like that. I think L. Ron Hubbard wanted to make cash, so he wanted followers to help him make cash. I don't think this guy was looking to make cash. I think he just wanted to get out of having to pay debts and having to, to pay taxes. I think that's a, the big difference. But, yeah, it's it's uh, it's got a fucking weird history. There, there's one guy that does he, – he's literally so insane. He argues over the definition and order of words. He has nine-hour videos up on YouTube. Uh, it's like quantum syntax or something like that if you look it up where he talks about if you word your sentence this way, you'll never go to jail ever again. I think like, we found it, the next person that we need on your podcast. I, I, I would not want to. I, could you? He talks for nine hours straight. Like I, I wanted to put him in the second video, but I was like, there's no way I can go through 40 different nine hour videos to try to take out pieces and discuss what the fuck is going on because it's just batshit insanity. Like it's so overly complicated. He has to assign numbers to functions and then create uh, pools and strings to explain how to word and order sentences. He's like, it's really simple. Just, you know, all your adjectives and your verbs and your nouns get this, this, and this. And then it's sequence number 48494912. And then you'll never get a ticket. And if you want to get out of paying a fine, it's 585321119. And I was like, holy shit. It'd be even better to see somebody actually try to do that, like to a cop, and see how long till the cop's head explodes. Right. Well, with these ones in particular, it's um, I think he's talking about arguing in court. This is another guy that um, would offer people legal advice and they all went to jail. 
it's remarkable. A lot of these people that bring up like sovereign citizen laws and this knowledge they claim to have offer those services for money. And then you pay them, and then they advise you while you're in court, and you always go to jail. So I don't know how he makes money, but there are a lot of fucking dumb people out there, I guess. Maybe he's just – maybe he's not a true believer. Maybe he's just a good old-fashioned con man, in which case he's really great at it because a lot of people pay him. It sounds like it. It makes me think of that one that you had in the video, and I, I've seen the whole video of the guy that's in court, and, like, he's talking, and it's just like the judge is looking at him like he's retarded. Uh, the bearded guy. Are you talking about the one who's like, I am not the individual? Yes, that one. Corporate. The yeah. co the uh, the judge's face is priceless. He's just like, what the fuck? Why well, yeah, I apparently, uh, apparently the backstory to that was he had a lot of encounters with that uh, kind of argument. So what he liked to do was he'd draw it out and make them get overly complicated about it till they tangled themselves up, and then he'd, he'd make a ruling. So he had the guy talk about how he was not the individual corporation person entity, <laughs> but the agent of the entity of the corporation. You know, all this fucking ridiculous less legally sounding uh, crap and made him tangle himself up to the point where he just looked stupid and was confused himself. I, I just, I was listening to it going, can someone translate this for me? Yeah, it, it's weird. So I, it, it's, again, at the end of the day, it's funny shit. I, I you know, I get, I, again, I had a lot of people that got angry, but I was like, you can't watch those videos and not laugh. It is fucking ridiculous. Well, I mean, look what happened with your DeviantArt videos. People can't take a joke. Yeah, surprisingly, uh, people can't take a joke. You know, the the weirdest thing is the least reaction for any video I've gotten would be on uh, the We Was Kings one. I've had nobody really from the Kemet community, the, the uh, you know, like the African Americans that think they're Egyptian princes. I've had nobody from that community get upset. I've I've had none of them show up and they're like, I'm gonna fucking you know destroy your channel and I'm gonna I'm gonna make a video in response. None of that shit. For so maybe they can take jokes. Maybe they know they look stupid. I don't know. Well, I mean, you weren't even like in most of the videos. You're not even really being mean. That's why I don't understand why so many people get. Well, you seem to have the superpower of really pissing off people, and like finding just the right groups that can't really take a joke. Yeah, I. I have seen your Twitter. <laughs> there, well, yeah, yeah, you've seen it, it past tense, because it's been nuked yeah. by Jack. But, um, yeah, I, that was, the I think, the one thing I enjoyed about Twitter the most was being able to fuck with people. So I, it's no surprise my Twitter got nuked. I mean, it was only a matter of time, especially with the way things were going on that platform. Uh, Best part is you not only got nuked, anyone that talked to you got throttled, because I got throttled just for talking to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that they weren't thrilled with my account to begin with, and then I did the throttling video. Um, and I'm sure they didn't like that because three days later the company came out and admitted basically that the shit I was talking about in the throttling video was what they were actually fucking doing. So, you know, Dorsey's not in a good place anyway right now. He's got a lot of people that are asking him to step down as CEO because he's running Square and Twitter at the same time. And they think that he's doing a bad job. And then on top of that, you have all these accusations that 15% of his website, which has 330 million users, are bots, which would mean that he has like around four. Think about that. If that's accurate, if 15% of the user base of Twitter are bots, that means that there are 45 million bot accounts right now on Twitter that aren't, they're not people. 45 fucking million bots. Like, what the hell, Dorsey? And, you know, there are some, there's some shady shit going on, too, with certain websites that offer um, social media ratings based on what's talked about on Twitter specifically. And I've noticed that bot accounts will specifically talk about somebody and that will affect that social media rating. So I think it's I think it's like a scam. I, I think that they put bots on the platform. They shit talk certain personalities and websites to lower the rating they're giving, and then make that person or that entity pay money to raise it up and counteract it. And I think that maybe people in Twitter, maybe people like Dorsey, are aware of shit like that going on, and have turned their head from it. Um, but yeah, he's not in a good place. People well, already pissed off that he's running two companies and that he's got this issue with bots and other things going on. It doesn't surprise me with the bots because I know a lot of my a lot of my stuff for a while, especially like my Indiegogo post, will get porn bots tweeting it out, going, "I want to fuck you tonight," and I'm like, "Okay." Um, yeah, yeah. What does that have to do with a cartoon? <laughs> yeah, the the site is is overrun. It's really kind of amazing. They're they're removing people to make way for bots. Eventually, it's going to be nothing but bots talking to other bots at the rate it's going. They're banning fucking everyone anyway. Somebody said uh, your Am I Being Detained video one is down. Yeah, I know that. I had a sovereign citizen take it down. Uh, so I, I emailed him uh, stating that I, you know, that the video falls under fair use and asking him to issue a retraction. 
Uh, if he doesn't, I'm going to just fire or file a counterclaim anyway. So it should be back up within the week. Oh, it's time but, for yeah. everybody to get a mirror of it. <laughs> yeah, but I, I am aware that happened. Uh, and the particular individual that did this was upset because I used, I think, a grand total of four seconds of a video he had in the video that I did, which is fucking ridiculous. But it, it clearly falls under fucking fair use, so I'm not worried about it at all. Hopefully he issues a retraction because it would be immediate, but if he doesn't, I'll just do a counterclaim and it'll take seven to ten days and it'll be back up. Oh, I mean, that's YouTube for you. There is somebody that's now taken, uh, what was it? All of Resident Evil 7, all the cutscenes, they're claiming ownership of it and copywriting everybody's videos. Well, that that's fantastic. And I like I even sent YouTube proof that it was fake, and they're like, no, no, this is the real company that owns it. I'm like, pretty sure they're not named Capcom. Yeah, well, you know, the interesting thing is um, YouTube has had issues with copyright in the past. I, I don't think a lot of people remember Kinjopi, but he basically shut YouTube down for a good while. <laughs> Like, he found a glitch in the system to file uh, tons of copyright claims without having to go through extra steps. So he shut down fucking account after account after account. People were furious with YouTube, and uh, they didn't they didn't really do anything. They don't really give a fuck. It's the same as, as it is right now. It doesn't surprise me that you could have somebody taking down all the Resident Evil shit, because uh, they, they just don't care. Like, they, they want you to file a counterclaim or get a retraction. To them, it's hands-off. They just don't give a shit. Isn't it when you send a uh, counterclaim... Uh, that it uh, gives the other person like all of your information. Uh, yeah. If you want to file a, a counterclaim to a DMCA, uh, you have to give them your name, your address, an email. I, I don't think you're obligated to give them a phone number, but people will include it at times. There, there are ways around that. If you're uncomfortable with giving out your address and shit like that, you can just give uh, a PO box, uh, and you don't have to include your phone number. You can also, I, I think that. Um, Destiny, because he he copyright he actually sent a, a DMCA against the tweet I put out, you can uh, do and then talked yeah, and then talked about it. Um, but he uses like an agent, a DMCA agent, so he uses that address rather than his home address. So uh, there there are ways around it, but yeah, usually you have to give a lot of information. I, I wrote an article. I used to write articles. That's so gay, but I wrote an yeah. article a long time ago about uh, the potential for abuse of children through DMCA. And my argument was that if you had somebody that was like a creepy pedophile or a stalker and they found a kid's channel on YouTube, right? And there are a lot of kid's channels that review toys and shit and they filed a bunch of fraudulent claims they could get personal information on a child target, right? Because then the kid is probably not going to go tell mom and dad. They'll just file a counterclaim. And to do that, they have to go up their name and their address and all this other shit. Uh, and that was kind of hand waved away. Like, oh, well, when is that ever going to happen? I still think eventually something like that is going to happen and they're going to have a, a bit of a shit storm. So we'll see. See, I would be more surprised that it hasn't happened and YouTube just kept it quiet. Because that's, it seems that's... fucked up that we have to give our information, but the person putting in the claim really doesn't. Like, theirs doesn't right. have to be shown. Right. Well, it, it, that is specifically to YouTube. Um, with. Twitter with that DMCA I got, you had to give the person making the DMCA claim had to give a name, an address, a phone number, all of that. They were legally obligated to. At least Twitter made them. Um, and I think with other sites, they make you actually provide information. For whatever reason, Google and YouTube just make the person making the claim give a name and an email, and that's it. Uh, and so there, there's no information that's necessary. And you can just do it online, so you don't even need to use a form. Uh, other places do it differently. Google is pretty pretty lax about it. So with uh, Twitter, since we were just talking about that, you have a second account, don't you? The bright side, or I mean, you know somebody with a second account, the bright side, Bob. Uh, I was using, uh, yeah, I made a, a joke account, uh, Ko Gaming, uh, but that that got I got the little, like a day after that went up. This was like eight months ago. A day after that went up, it put up the little warning saying we need your phone number to unlock this, and I was like, fuck that, so I haven't touched okay. it. So you're not, you're just not even gonna make a new, uh, a new Twitter. You're just gonna say fuck Twitter. Yeah, I, I, I got banned. Whatever, you know, I can deal with it. Um, it, it's probably for the best anyway. I was using it way too fucking much. Um, you know, it, it you get addicted to it uh, and shit talking and trolling. So it's probably for the best that I got banned off of it. But yeah, it is kind of easy to troll on there. Even I've gotten in trouble a couple of times doing it. Thanks right. to you. So I, I guess the best way to put it is I'm not going to pull Yiannopoulos and go and uh, be upset about losing my Twitter for like a month. 
Like, I know he was really pissed off about it. Like, I, I'm upset about it to a degree, but I'm not going to rage about it. Whatever. I got, you know, it's fucking social media. Who cares? It's a Twitter account, whatever. Now, have you tried that um, that site, Gab? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I tried Gab. Um, my, my issue with that is they don't let you do image uploads, and that kind of fucking kills it for me. I, I'm going to be honest with you. It basically is like Twitter. It functions like Twitter. It works well. I mean, I didn't. There's not like any technical issues with the site or anything, but it's the lack of image uploads. You can only put up uh, images through Giphy, through searching their website through like a, a little plugin, and like you know, it just that's 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 a major part of what made shit posting on Twitter entertaining was being able to put up images and not being able to do that just it kind of kills the kills the vibe of the place for me. Maybe so the, they'll change that. I don't know, but that, yeah, it's an issue. Yeah, I kind of agree with you on that one. So the big question, how long do you think you're going to get banned off of Facebook? Uh, who knows? It, it could happen. I've only had one issue on Facebook uh, where I put up a PewDiePie video where he's talking about Nazi shit, and I put in a fake, uh, around it, a fake uh, video title and description, and that got pulled down like in a day. But aside from that, Facebook has pretty much left me alone. Um, let's see, what's the chat? You know what, let's not look at the chat right now. <laughs> Why's that? I, I love chat. I love when chat is going I on about I think they're just all unrelated. masturbating to your sweet, sweet voice. I highly doubt that. How many times have I been called a faggot so far? Let's see. Oh, how woke is this chat? <laughs> see, now you're just going to send them into a tism now that they know you're paying attention. Well, yeah, I mean, half the fun of doing a stream, though, is letting chat just say whatever the fuck it's going to say. So when is the next time we're going to see you do a stream where you're going to make fun of another uh, Let's Player? Like Dark uh, of, a let's play, of a Let's Player? I, you know, I, I, like I, say I say Let's Player in the broadest term when I'm talking about like Dark Side Phil and shit. Yeah, I mean, I liked uh, poking fun at him and doing streams on him and stuff, but I, I don't know. I kind of got burnt out on it. Like after you do it like five or six times, it, doing it every day kind of gets old. Um, I pay attention once in a while to kind of what he's up to. But, you know, Brightside Bob uh, was mostly just for shitposting uh, and for kind of fucking about. I, I might do a stream about Spoonie when he does one because he gets really fucking aggravated uh, with his chat and telling them that they need to behave, which I think is ridiculous. Oh, can I come along for that one? <laughs> I don't know when I'd even be doing it. <laughs> but, you know, Spoonie's streaming schedule is fucking really sporadic and bizarre. But just that, just that kind of shit. I, I like the idea of watching somebody stream who hates their own chat, because then you can stream them streaming, and your chat <laughs> can fuck with their chat, and it creates a clusterfuck effect, which is really entertaining. See, I, I, I do a lot of streaming, as you can see. I can't imagine being, like, that hateful toward your chat. They are the ones kind of giving you money and stuff. It's like, like them. You have to like them. Well, no, I, I just like free for all. I like that's the thing I really enjoy about the internet the most. I like, like I've heard a lot of people say they don't like anonymity anymore, and they they like to moderate everything so much. I, I like it being a free for all. That's what makes it fucking entertaining is having just crazy random shit thrown out for no reason, and there's no filter. That to me is really fucking enjoyable. Um, that's why I like I like chats. It, I have a feeling that's not going to be like that for very long on YouTube. I, I think YouTube and Google is going a certain direction that's going to make it harder to say what you want in a chat, and it's going to make it harder to leave the comments you want on videos. But for right now, I want to enjoy it while it lasts. Well, look at how YouTube, a couple of years ago, tried to get everyone to use their real names. Yeah, with the Google Plus shit? Yeah, and thankfully you can make a second account so that your name, your real name isn't shown. But it was such a stupid idea on their part. Yeah, well, it, it's it's the it was a, a type of approach to try to make you behave. Their reasoning was if you have to use your real name attached to a social media account, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook or Twitter or wherever the fuck it is, you're not going to say the, the shit that you want to say. You'll be more behaved because it can be traced back to you. It's the whole let's kill anonymity to make everybody be polite. Um, and I think that is the worst direction you can take the Internet. I don't want people to be polite. I want to hear fucking outrageous shit and, uh, you know, I want to hear fucking terrible jokes. That's enjoyable to me. I don't like this idea of trying to make everybody behave on the internet. I think that's fucking awful. We need chaos on the internet. It's no fun without it. Yeah, it gets very boring uh, very quickly. It becomes like a fucking stale uh, forum, almost. Like, if you've ever been on a forum that got up its own ass and started uh, instituting way too many, you know, like, rules and regulations... It just becomes sanitized and unfun and nobody says anything, and then it just loses membership. 
uh, and I don't want to see that happen to the internet as a whole. I, I want people to be able to say outrageous shit and terrible shit and just fucking whatever they want. That is great. That's one of the great things about the internet. So, and I knew this was going to come up. Let's talk about Capture the Flag. Oh, uh, you talking about uh, Shia? Yes. Yeah, uh, from what I understand, isn't he going to... Where the fuck is it? He's going somewhere in Europe now. Uh, was like Poland or Lapland or some fucking place uh, in the middle of nowhere to live in a cabin for a month? You guys have driven him to the point of utter insanity. Right. It's my understanding he's going to be in a cabin with two other people for an art project for a month in another country uh, where they stream themselves. Now, I don't know if that's accurate. Maybe that's bullshit. But my God, if he did that, it would be great if people would surround the cabin and blare music <laughs> at them and scream at them through a bullhorn all day, every day, because it would drive him fucking insane. Just put a bunch, just make a bunch of little pepes and put them around there at night. So when he wakes up, they're surrounding the uh, cabin. <laughs> or just, you know, light <laughs> off M80s and just huck them in the air. See how many, how many fucking explosions it takes to drive shy insane. <laughs> Oh, so he's finally finished with He Will Not Divide Us, because I was enjoying watching that. Uh, yeah, somebody in your chat said the cabin was fucking real. I, I, I don't know if it is or not. I, I've read a couple of things where people were saying it was real. Like I said, I hope it is, because that would be fucking amazing <laughs> if it is. It's going to backfire in such a terrible fucking way for him if that's true. I don't think there's anywhere on Earth he can put a flag that people will not find it and take it down. I don't even think it's the the people that initially were a part of it, of fucking with Shia for whatever reason, I think it's now become a game that the internet itself is taking part in. And so it, it really doesn't matter where he puts that fucking flag. Somebody is going to find it and take it down. So the idea that he would do this cabin thing makes sense because they're trying to change it up in a way that you can't steal something from them. But I think the end result is going to be a shit ton of people around that cabin making noise and fucking with him for an entire 30 days straight. You know, honestly... Like, half of me, if it was anybody else, would say he's doing it on purpose. Like, he knows, <clears throat> sorry, the internet is fucking with him. Like, he's enjoying it. But then you see the shit he's done in before, and it's like, I don't think he gets that everybody else sees this as a game. He really is pissed about this. I, I don't think that this is some master plan by him. I don't think he's some great puppet master that's like, oh, well, now I'll get publicity and my cause will be known. I, I think he's up his own ass. And I think he's probably really fucking angry. Hey, here's a guy who's super rich. He's a celebrity. Everybody in the world knows who he is. And instead of taking his stupid art project seriously, people are shitting all over it and shitting all over him. And they've done so now for like two months straight. And I think it's really fucking with his ego. And I don't think he wants to let it go. I think he wants to try to find some way to win this. And he's not going to win this. That's what's so funny about it. And think about this. The internet is tracking down a fucking celebrity all over the world to fuck with him for no other reason than to just simply fuck with him. And that is amazing to me. And I think it's driving him insane. Now that he wasn't already insane. Oh, no. Now I think he's legitimately losing his shit. Because <laughs> uh, like, when people would show up wearing like uh, Pepe shirts or fucking stickers or posters or whatever, he'd get really fucking angry. Like really noticeably angry about that. Like he, he couldn't take it. See, that's why we need to do the Pepe horror on him. If he's doing the cabin, get the little Pepe figures, put him around the cabin every time he comes back to it. <clears throat> Damn my voice. Well, well, yeah, I made a joke about um, him. Like I said, eventually it's going to just be him in a basement uh, by himself with the flag <laughs> filming himself. And if this cabin thing is real, we've reached that point. He's now has to lock himself inside a facility to protect his stupid fucking flag. And I, gear, I, I really do think that even if he does this, somebody will find a way to fuck with him that will make him end it early. Like, it's becoming a point of pride. Like, can you drive him insane and make him close the season down early? Because we're on, like, season five now. He's failed four fucking times. So, you know, it's just get your name in the history book. Did you drive Shia LaBeouf <laughs> insane by fucking with his art project? My question is, what the fuck did he think he was going to get out of doing this? He thought he was going to... It's... It's a celebrity mentality. It's not even like a, a left-leaning or right-leaning thing, even though he is obviously leaning to the left. It's the celebrity mentality that anything they do needs to be taken seriously when they talk about something. And he, th you know, him and Jaden Smith thought that they were going to do this art project, and everybody was going to be like, "Oh my God, how, how avant-garde, how intelligent are they? This is so cutting edge. Ooh, we're really impressed." And nobody thought that. They thought it was fucking dumb. And then he's trying to tell people, oh, well, he will not divide us, doesn't refer to Trump when it does. 
So it, it, it got people who just didn't like his smug attitude, and it got people who were pissed off that he was shitting on Trump together, and they all started going to these stupid fucking areas and fucking with him. But I think somewhere around the third or fourth time, it the group of people fucking with him got even larger because other people on the internet started paying attention and were like, this is pretty fun. Like, let's hunt this idiot's flag down and fuck with him. And that's kind of where we are now. Isn't it? Um, I remember reading somebody said they were going to show up in a Bumblebee outfit just to fuck with him. Like from Transformers and stuff? Oh, somebody was asking what happened uh, with the different seasons. Season one was the art museum in New York. Uh, and that got shut down because he got violent. And the uh, museum didn't want to put up with all the people getting pissed off. Season two was in Albuquerque. And that got shut down because gunshots were fired like a block away on the third or fourth night. Season three was him uh, putting a fucking flag in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere, and they tracked it down using stars and aircrafts and animal sounds and stole the fucking flag. <laughs> season season four was in uh, the UK somewhere. I can't remember exactly where. And they put it on the roof of a museum, and people found a way to basically get onto the roof from other buildings and were planning to steal it, and it got shut down either as they stole it or were about to steal it. So that was the four different seasons. Season five will be him sitting in a cabin, smearing himself in human feces because he's gone insane. I think I'll watch that season. I think so, too. I think <laughs> it's going to be great watching him go crazy. It's, I kind of love that people are starting to, like, talk back to these um, celebrities that are like, we're better than you. We know, we know more than you. I'm so glad people are starting to go, no, fuck you. Right, yeah, because... It's just obnoxious. Celebrities have done this shit for decades and decades where they're up their own ass about their, their causes, whatever they are. It's just for whatever reason, this particular one was the one people decided to start fucking with. And they followed him all over the world. They followed him from state to state and then country to country. Uh, and, like, he must be losing his shit over that. Like, I don't think – I can't remember this ever happening before. So I don't know what he's going to do. But he, I don't think he wants to let it go. I think he's – it's become a contest with him in his mind where he wants to win and he does not want uh, shit posters from the internet making him look bad. But every time he reattempts this, he looks worse and worse. What exactly drove him from just doing Hollywood movies to this kind of shit? That's my big question. That I don't know about. I, he's always done really weird shit. Um, there was some red carpet event where he, like, he's one of those guys that likes to pretend he's into method acting and he, he was doing some part of like a homeless man or a drug addict where he's wearing like a bag on his head and he wouldn't break character. And it was really fucking weird. So, I mean, he's done weird shit for a while now. Um, so maybe this was always kind of his thing and this is a more public form of that. But all I know is Jaden Smith uh, basically pulled the fucking uh, eject cord. And like he got the fuck out of there. He's uh, the smart so I, one out of the two. Yeah, I don't and think he's involved. I don't, I don't think he's involved with it anymore. I think it's just shy at this point. I w it would be funny to see both of them locked in a cabin, just rocking back and forth. Yeah, I, I don't know where it's going to go, but um, yeah, God, I really hope he does the cabin thing. I really, really hope he does, because it's going to be funny to watch that. And I hope the people that fuck with him make sure to record everything, because that's really important. Like, you can't just depend on his camera catching the noises and uh, the video and stuff. You need to record it yourself, so you can put it up later and show how uh, mad he gets, because he's going to get very angry. <laughs> It, it like didn't like the last one didn't it only take them a day or like two days to find him yeah season three with the flag in the field took them about 48 hours season four with the flag on the roof took them less than a day so they 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 got uh, twice as fast on that one first time two days second one or the last time uh one day basically it's amazing and scary how well the internet can work uh together to fuck with someone yeah, I thought it was impressive that they were able to use uh, the stars, where the sun was rising from, uh, air traffic, uh, the sound of roads nearby, the different sounds of animals, the grass. You know, like, they used all this different shit to coordinate and figure out exactly where that flag was in the third season, and they found it so fucking quickly. <laughs> Weaponized autism. Yep, that basically explains it. Yeah, oh, well, I mean, but it is impressive. I mean, it, that that was a hell of a feat to accomplish. And then getting somebody to actually show up, steal the flag, and then run up a Trump hat and shirt on the flagpole, I know that made him angry. <laughs> I know that pissed him off. See, I knew they had put something up on the flagpole. I didn't know that's what it was. That is amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what they ended up running up there. And um, 
<laughs> like I, I saw pictures. I don't know how accurate they were, where they were talking about the route the person took from his car through the field to get to the flagpole and back. And it's like some Metal Gear shit. Like it's like a fucking operation that was planned out, you know, uh, methodically on how to get there and not be seen or observed when the guards weren't going to be around, that kind of shit. Was it like all 4chan doing it or was it more than just 4chan at that point? So I know 4chan was a majority of it for like um, the first season. Uh, from my understanding, like, yeah, from my understanding, it was 4chan poll and 8chan poll. And then I think 8chan had uh, He Will Not Divide Us board. But I know a, a good majority of it was on 4chan. I think as it got into like season four, you started to see Reddit get more involved. Um, but, you know, it, a lot of it, too, was on like Twitter. People fucking with him on there. It just it seemed like people from a lot of websites. It started as like a 4chan thing. And then it kind of grew out from that uh, to kind of, you know, encompass 8chan. And then it grew out from that and a little bit of Reddit and then out from that. That's what I mean by I, I think it's reached a point now where there are so many people interested in fucking with him that I don't I don't know where the fuck he's going to go. Where where can this asshole go where he's going to be safe? He's going to have to go somewhere like fucking Antarctica or in the, the coldest ball freezing area of Alaska to have a shot at getting away from people. And even then, I guarantee you there's going to be some autist who will track him down <laughs> just for the fun of it. You still there? Yeah, no, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I... I really hope we get to see the cabin. I, I, I'm totally in on that now just because I want to see all the ways people are going to fuck with him. You can go yeah, straight I, I up can, horror movie with that. I, I can I can imagine a shit ton. Of, I mean, you can you can engage in psychological warfare. You can play songs nonstop all day long. You can bring in garbage and dump it downwind so his cabin smells like shit nonstop <laughs> for 30 days. Like, there are a lot of ways to fuck with this guy. I, I can't imagine he'll stay in a cabin that smells like burning garbage while fucking Chatelet plays at full volume. Like, <laughs> he's not going to be able to handle Isn't it. Isn't it when they first played Chatelet at the place, like, everybody was like, oh, it's so diverse and things like that? <clears throat> yeah, because at first they didn't know what they were listening to. So people were like, oh, that's that's got a good beat to it. <laughs> uh, but as he figured out what people were, why they were playing it, he got really angry. Uh, and then so did the people that were showing up. Uh, it got to the point where... If you said uh, Pepe, or if you had anything green looking on you, or if you played <laughs> a certain kinds of music, uh, he would flip his shit. Oh man, that is amazing! Cause I I've only seen some of it, but I didn't know it got. I I knew he attacked someone. Didn't he attack someone, and it ended up being like somebody on his own side? He attacked four people. Like he only four? got into yeah four. He only got into trouble for going after one because the guy claimed he scratched him when he when he started uh, waving his arms at him like a spaz. <laughs> uh, but before that, he chased two people down, and there was another physical confrontation that was caught on camera, where it was really, really far off to the uh, to the roadside, so it was hard to really watch. But I, at least as far as I'm concerned, I counted four. There could be more, but no, I, I know the last one is the one he got in trouble for. I think there's five because I remember um, DJ Anon was playing music, and he went over and he was like threatening to slash his tires and stuff. Yeah, no, that's one of the ones I'm talking oh, about. Oh, okay. There's another one where he chased a guy down the street. Um, he sexually one of the, assaulted a guy. No, he didn't. He chased one. He chased one guy down the street, and basically threatened him like, "I'm gonna fuck you up." Uh, so yeah, he he's he's really he's really off balance to begin with, and he's got a short fuse, which makes it even more entertaining to watch people fuck with him because you know he's going to have a breakdown eventually. Yeah, and that's gonna either be him hurting himself or him trying to kill somebody. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I want to see what his breaking point is. And I think maybe season five will present a good opportunity for that. Maybe we can drive him insane enough to start screaming, the green frogs are after me. Well, you could you could fuck with him and, you know, show up dressed as a green frog and just look through the windows at <laughs> weird intervals to make him think he's hallucinating. Like you could fuck with him in ways <laughs> like that. <laughs> so I don't know, but it would be it'd be pretty great. I just have a mental picture of it, like coming up, then going down, then coming up. <laughs> right, great. like just imagine uh, the sounds of uh, you know frogs ribbiting at fucking two hundred decibels being blasted <laughs> at that cabin. Like you know, eventually he's going to lose his shit. No, no, not only that, you have to start playing. Uh, it's uh, not easy being green. Yeah, where he thinks he's seeing nothing but Kermit the Frog around every corner. Like, eventually he's just going to lose his shit. <laughs> oh, man. That poor bastard. He deserves it. He was mm -hmm. terrible in Transformers. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I was not a big fan of the Michael Bay movies. Uh, they kind of bored me, to be honest.
Yeah, why is he still allowed to ruin that franchise? Who knows? It's gone off on such a weird direction on its own now at this point. I, I don't even know. Like, Optimus is now like a fucking space knight, and I I have no idea what the fuck. Yeah, going they're on. trying to bring in, like, they're trying to shoehorn in the quintessence, uh, quint, uh, the aliens that made the... the... Quint, yeah, the quintessons? Yeah. 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 And like, I'm sure Unicron, too, probably they'll try to work that in, but it's just, uh, I am not a big fan of them. It makes me sad since I'm a huge Transformers fan. I'm like, why are you doing this to things I love? And now they're planning, oh, they're talking about doing a Beast Wars movie and then like a prequel movie and stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure that they'll, and it'll probably make hundreds of millions of dollars because that shit, for whatever reason, is just, uh, it's gold at the box office. So they'll, they'll probably make as many as they can until it's like the fucking Saw franchise where they're on number 12. Yeah, and they're re- they are making another Saw movie too. Of course, of course. <laughs> They'll never stop. They'll just, it's not that it's new either. I mean, if you look at like uh, Friday the 13th or um, Nightmare on Elm Street, they made a shit ton of those too because they kept making money off them. Yeah, but at least in Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy was funny. Yeah, but I mean, it, there's a point where they get to milk it so much. I mean, like if you look at the transformation from Nightmare on Elm Street 1 and 2 to like 5 and 6, I guess, it yeah. went from him, him being scary and a little bit funny to him being funny and a little bit scary. Like it flipped it. Um, so who knows, but yeah, they'll, they'll make as many as they can and try to milk as much money as they can out of audiences. Which is a shame because anything good ends up getting ruined. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But, um, let's see what the chat, oh no, the chats are talking. Transformers 5 has Nazis. What? That's, I, I don't know. That's what they're saying. Uh, <laughs> so I, I guess we're coming to an end here. Okay. And I want to thank you for joining. Hopefully you'll come on again because this was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a problem. Uh, just uh, ask again and I'll pop on. Not a big deal. All right. Hopefully the next time you come on, because um, I know you play Killing Floor too. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I played that uh, for a good like 20 hours already. It is fun. I, I've got a friend that's got a private server with all, a whole bunch of different maps like Doom and things like that. Hopefully he'll actually be around next time I invite you on. We can all have some fun on that. Yeah. Sounds good. So I'm going to let you go. Again, thank you so much for joining. Yeah, yeah. Uh, have a good weekend. And uh, like I said, just hit me up again if you want me to pop on. Bye. All right, bye. All right, guys. Thank you for joining me uh, for this. This was a lot of fun. I got a good laugh. Uh, I hope everybody new in the chat goes ahead and subscribes. Um, and I'll – actually, Shadow will be back later tonight. We might do some Cards Against Humanity. I don't know what he's got planned. But I've got to go do some stuff. So I'll see you later. Bye, everyone.